I just see things that I, that I like and and purchase either with an investor or with company money. But yeah, that, that's a good example, the one you got there, which is yeah. but six kilometers from Figaro des Vignes. And it's a uh, it's an old farmhouse, actually. It's an, a dagger downstairs and accommodation upstairs. And it's just great, great value. I've had a lot of interest in people looking to buy and do something up themselves, uh, obviously contracting in plumbers and electricians, etc. cetera, uh, and looking for a good old, honest, solid stone four walls with which they can can work and i think people are becoming more realistic uh in terms of price you can't do it for nothing yes. um, that, that that those days are gone um but working with the councils here if you if you need to have a project they're very willing to have these old buildings re-inhabited re yeah this one's got got water electricity it's got thousand meters of land steel um, isn't it it's an absolute yeah it is yeah it's 40 grand is or whatever i put it on for forty two thousand. it's yes. got olive, olive trees and the walk from there is down to the busa reservoir um, which isn't it, it's not a touristy one like cabril yeah. Um, yeah but it's just a really pleasant area and yet you're less than 10 minutes to town so and did you just chance upon it is that how it worked yeah well one of the agents actually um messaged me to say that um, the set I'd seen this before online, and I had a message that the seller had suddenly become uh, highly motivated. <laughs> That's brassic, yeah, okay. which, which means desperate. So yeah. putting in a ridiculous offer and walking away from it, um, yeah. found that it was accepted, which is fine. Now yeah. this one will either sell it now if somebody has the interest to do it, and we can certainly help with contacts on that if people need to know good roofers or whatever in that area oh, um cool. or or we'll as a company develop it but probably not till this time next year or late late summer next year so it's know. available if somebody wants to pick it up in, in pretty much that condition yeah, you can yeah they can it. have it as is i've done nothing nothing to it apart from make sure it's safe so incredible yeah. so that's yeah it is and it's kind of too too good to miss i hate for it to sit there languishing at what I found out was an unrealistic price before. So yes, yeah. It's, um, the the, um, the roof picture. Have you started some work on it then? Because you you no. sent me a, a, another picture as well. Is this I a, know, different... a different house? Oh, okay. All right. So we've got we've got others to talk about. But I, I'm <laughs> quite I'm quite um, obsessed by this one now uh, momentarily, and and this interior here. Do you still get excited when you walk into one of these old properties to see oh, how yeah, they've done and what's been left behind? Yeah, definitely, because there's I like the the things there. There's some lovely old old pots. Well, there uh, they are. I saw those immediately. And four yeah, right? that was a bigger it would have been made in. There was a slightly larger collection. So the ones with handles have, have now have now gone. But no, I always look for newspaper, and the oldest, uh, the youngest newspaper I found here was 1986. Wow! So there's definitely been somebody there then. Pro probably nobody since, judging That's by the. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you, I mean, some of it's sort of romantic and wistful and oh, how people used to live. And the rest of it is it's sat here for that long. It's like being in limbo and it needs to go to heaven or hell, really. And that's, and... <laughs> the, the Archbishop of Canterbury job's available, Paul. Apparently it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, but you have to be invited. I'm waiting for the. Oh, floor. I see. Right. OK. You were, you, you were leaning into it there, though, I have to say. Um, yeah. Well, yeah <laughs> What this can is, I say? This yeah. is fabulous. And it looks like, as sometimes happens, the animals have um, made themselves at home here as well, haven't they, in the absence of human beings too? Oh, there's, yeah, definitely, definitely cases of, uh, of nesting. Oh. But I, I just look at the four square walls. Um, yes. And it's actually, yeah, the, this one has got an established outbuilding that's not registered. So you can... The registered area, I think, is 42 square metres, but in fact, there's a, an awful lot more. But I'm not going to register it because you can do that when you buy it. This uh, is incredible. This is a hitchhiker's guide house, isn't it? 42,000, 42 square metres. That, that is, is, the, yeah. is yeah. the answer to every question, isn't it? It's 42. Well, it's certainly when yes. it comes to this home. Yeah, that's so exactly. 
Exactly. Folks can get in touch with you about that one. And we'll stay with this incredible value and these charming homes here. What can you tell us about this one? Yeah, well, this again, this is a village next to Castaneda de Pera. Okay, heading over that. Is, yeah, famous for its massive summertime water beach where half of Lisbon seems to drive up. And, is and that who goes there? Because I, I did wonder. You know, it's two well, months it's, of the year, it's, it's jam packed, isn't it? The rest of the year, it looks like. What happened here? It looks like um, a sort of zombie apocalypse movie, doesn't it? Well, the tide, yeah, the tide goes out. They pull the they pull the plug, and it just reverts to a to a, a river. I think. Um, yeah, it's. I would say it's ninety nine percent Portuguese um, day day trippers and people looking for accommodation there and going for a week. And it's it's a great. Not only can, is it refreshing to swim in a river beach, it's kind of a party. Yeah. venue as well it's a lot of the same age kids go there and they hang out it's it it's it turns the town into something of a very different character for three months of the year so it's That's really interesting yeah. there's a huge pressure on on cheap um overnight accommodation and this small cottage is in a village called fontau which is almost attached to castaniera mm -hmm. um and if someone buys it, I mean, it's 20 grand. If someone buys it, they can turn it into a letting and earn good money from it. It's got, it's got eight and a half thousand euros worth of work's been done on it already in yes. terms of um, the roof. So it needs insulating, wiring, everything's there. You can link it to mains water, main sewage. It's got electricity in the street. Um, and it's 20 grand. You know, you probably spend another 10 on it yes. and then you've got something you can let for good money night nightly and you can walk from there you can walk into Castanera so it's pretty you know the, the the point is you're not having to spend a huge chunk of capital to get a return you can be adept and if you can do the a bit of work and leave things in a rust a rustic state but still habitable you know comfortable look at the younger market in that area and it's you know it's 40 50 quid a night throw your rucksack in the corner crash out have a few beers stay the nothing week wrong with that nothing stay wrong the week, with that. move on you know it's good good affordable affordable stuff and from the landlord's point of view you're not putting equipment in a fancier villa or apartment and fretting that somebody's going to throw up in your microwave you know that <laughs> <laughs> and other which, such airbnb disasters yeah which was yeah which was a complaint one somebody wants to know who, who they could complain to um, wow maybe yeah. someone left something in the micro for too long maybe it isn't what they thought but it, answered, it could have been yeah you've answered a question that people didn't know they had there which is you, you know these these this is incredible value this sort of place the other one that we put on the screen okay so you buy that but then what do you do with it and and the 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 passerby who doesn't know portugal very well wouldn't know would they in castanero de pera for example there's a massive demand at certain times of year and actually once these places get better known mm -hmm. the, the shoulder as it as it's known in the hotel business or the tourism yeah. business is going to extend isn't it and there's no reason why you you wouldn't have people chucking their rucksacks in the corner as you put it from spring right through until now possibly as a season yeah absolutely yeah i mean with, with some you need heating in these houses not, not cooling because the walls are nearly a meter thick yeah um yeah i mean off season the beginning and the end of the season uh castanera has got it's actually going through a, a revival i would say it I seems mean, so yeah yeah it's coming out of its sleepy sleepy torpor and there's <laughs> they've just redone the old ca camera camera council building which is now a thing of great beauty in the lane behind it there's one of the best bar restaurants in the area um in, where in, you know, itself, in the main town yeah right yeah yeah and in in it's just behind the council highly recommended if you like dead animals to consume mm, um, that, i'm not sure that, not sure they have a vegetarian option um Okay, yeah, that kind things of place. like that are an attraction in themselves. If you know there's two or three good restaurants in a town, and yes. then you can you can do your bicycling or walking. Um, you're surrounded by exceptional countryside. Yes. So 
yeah, but either end of the season, the shoulder months, as you call it. Oh. I mean, in the south, it's filled by golfers um, who come in the spring and the autumn. Uh, in in other areas, it's up to the owner to to produce um, something mouth watering and for the autumn, you know. And, and people never change, they, they never seem to change their pictures online when they're doing lettings. I mean, this time of year, it should be crackling log fires, chestnuts, and yeah. a glass of red wine. You know, yes, come, come for the romantic weekend. Look at the younger yeah. market. Um, <laughs> so it, yeah, it is interesting. These little houses tucked away. Yeah, if you, can, yeah. if you can make them snug, and, and by that I mean putting in a wood burner. You know, it's it's not rocket science. Um, you can a appeal to a whole different demographic. Um, I stayed in one when I went, and you know they they have this. Pete's done a great job with the Pera Beer Festival, uh, which yeah. is you know it will be in its third year next year. I stayed at the delightful. Um, I can't remember the name now, but I made a video of it. Down a little lane, down a little cobbled lane, so quiet, so peaceful by the river, and and the, the owner there has made it very snug. It was Stefan. It's been in, handed over to a new lady now who who's, who understands the beauty of its retreat like location, yeah. and um, she's done a fantastic job. And and the, yes, there could be so much of that, and then it becomes a trail, doesn't it? Then it becomes take your pick of these lovely places yeah. to stay in that lovely part of Portugal, which clearly seems to be going on at the moment. And it is, you know, it is proper Portugal, isn't it? It is the place where you can, I, I was uh, riding around on my bike and, and the car when I was there. And it's still the sort of place where, you know, old Portuguese folk go out and sun themselves at the bus stop or on the corner of the street yeah. whilst, you know, like, um, you know, like warming their bones. It's, 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 and, there, and there are shrines along the road and these little cafes that you talk about. It's really authentically Portuguese over there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, the, the tourist board, if you like, for the region, there's the Aldeias de Xisto, the, the, yes. the stone villages that are, that are loose, loosely joined together. Um, and there are, beyond that, there are, there are other, other villages that, in my opinion, would qualify in terms of um, attractiveness and location totally agree totally and agree. yeah they're dotted around and it's up to the it's up to the business owners the airbnb owners the letting owners to um to promote and be a bit be intelligent about how how you promote a different during the different seasons well that's Isn't a a lovely insight you've given us because you know that's in, in terms of investment and buying property in Portugal that's a really great angle isn't it and also for people who want to visit and tour that's a lovely thing they probably won't find on, on tourist guides in, yeah indeed and the if you can reduce your capital cost to, to as, little, as little as possible and have something attra attractive and functional yes and stop there. You don't need to put in central heating. You don't need to have, you know, all sorts of fancy equipment. There's a lot to be said for not roughing it for a few days, but but, yeah. um, but moving from your city centre lifestyle to a bit of Portugal countryside, you know, yes. where the where the you hear the bread van in the morning and rush out in your underpants. You know, it's it's uh, it, can't it's, wait. <coughs> Indeed, going back to the homoerotic theme you were developing earlier. <laughs> yes, of course. It's never far away. Never <laughs> far away, as, 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 as the bishop told me. From um, the truth. Yes. Right. Well, thank you so much for that that, that little theme this morning. Uh, Casa Ribeira yes. is, is the, is the uh, place where I stayed, and I'll put that uh, link on the screen. And it gives you a really good idea. What I videoed as I came back from the beer festival – and and the, the next morning really sums up the magical atmosphere of, of those valleys there. Really great place to go. Really good subject to be talking about. And uh, ruralproperties.com. Before Heather joins us, let's quickly have a look at your site then, Paul, because it's important that people know where to go to find out more. And lovely that you go, you know, you, you go in luxurious high end. And then you'll say, oh, there's this available for 20 grand or this available for 42,000 in central Portugal. So that's what you're looking at there, rural-properties.com. Anything else you want to bring to our attention uh, before you leave? Yeah, just, just the fact that we're not, rural properties isn't really an estate agent. I've got a mediation license, but um, I, I'm not pushing the individual properties. 
what I do want is people to invest in renovating properties with us. So the ones that you see there are things that we've bought with investors that we are developing into high-end properties. And yes. In fact, we've just um, in the process of selling a big one in Pedroga Grand, the old the, the old tavern and hostel, to a lovely American who is uh, has his own ideas, his own plans, own layout that we're working to make sure that happens um, and is absolutely perfect for his needs. So these yeah. things sometimes um, and annoyingly take a while to sell, but when we find a buyer, the the sort of love gets shared around, you know, and it's absolutely rather than finishing things and saying there it is. Yes. Um, but, but they vary. I mean, it's um, it's lovely to work with somebody from I wouldn't say the ground upwards, but from from a shell um, to develop something that is really special. So as we can see, the 